Tea up. Magic. You wouldn't spill it in here, for God's sake. Uh, yeah. So, everything all right? Hmm. Shouldn't be too long. Just got to find out which one of these wires is Williams. <whistles> ah, right. Got it. So, there's going to be no problems today, then, eh? And what's that supposed to mean? Well, you have been going through a bit of a rough patch recently, haven't you? I'd hardly call one little mishap a rough patch. Oh, come on, Pete. It was a bit more than a little mishap. You nearly caused the diplomatic with the Panamanian government. Look, it wasn't my fault. I've just never used a laser before. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> the question is, should you be using stuff with which you are not fully conversant? Look, I knew what I was doing, all right? I had the laser pointing at the windows of the embassy so as I could register the vibrations of the glass as the people inside spoke. Now, once I'd got that, I knew I could turn it back into recordable speech. You melted their window. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I suppose I did. And you blinded the Panamanian ambassador. <laughs> Temporarily. He got his sight back after three days. And he found out that his cataract problem had been cured. So we're not in for any such cock-ups today, then, eh? Look, would you just shut up? It's a simple phone tap, all right? Right. Done it. Just check the line. Sum up, Piglet. Instead of gathering vital information about a group of militant activists, you laid us open to an investigation by the Security Services Commission and a civil suit under the 1985 Interception of Communications Act. Is that a fair assessment of your morning's work? Yes, sir. Oh, for goodness sake, man, you're starting to make Dexter look competent. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Shut up, Dexter. Let me be quite clear about this, Piglet. I will not stand this kind of carelessness in my department. You either get your act together and start producing results, or you're out! Do you hear me? Out! Well, that was close. <laughs> One moment there, I thought he was going to give me a rollicking. <laughs> I think Pete's problem could be hormonal. What, you mean like the male menopause? Yeah, something like that. No, he's too young. Could be that yappy flu. Don't be stupid, he hasn't even got a file of facts. <laughs> strangely, that's for sure. I mean, he's not concentrating on his work. He's drinking far more than he used to. How long's this been going on? What, the Gigi's? A few weeks now. Hold up, here he is. I wonder how he got on. Any luck? <laughs> Just perfect. I have an unerring gift of being able to pick out nags that would be better off on the menu of a French restaurant than ambling around Haydock. So you didn't win, then? <laughs> win? Golden Toes, it was called. Should have been called Comatose. <laughs> I've seen pasta animals giving rides to kids on Blackpool Beach. It was in the lead briefly. And the other horses came out of the paddock, and that was it. <laughs> Still, she'll be all right tomorrow. Been given a cert for the 2.30 at Cheltenham. <clears throat> Here, Flint, could you lend us a tenner? No way. I'm not subsidising your gambling. Oh, come on. I'll give it back to you tomorrow. I'm sorry, Peter. The only money I ever give to animals is via the RSPCA. Well, most of the animals I've backed so far have been sick. <laughs> Who about you? Tim? Nope. Sorry, mate. Flint's right. It's a mugs game. You know what they say? A fool and his money are soon parted. Flint is a tenor, Dexter. All right, Piglet, sit down. I've been studying the report about your drinking, gambling, and general loutish behaviour. Your financial problems appear to be the cause of great concern within the department as well. Yes, sir. All I can say is, 
Good show. Keep it up. <laughs> yes, but for how long, sir? It's putting an enormous pressure on me and my marriage. Really? Oh. And my colleagues have started to avoid me as well, no? There's only Dexter that's prepared to talk to me. Yes, he's a bit like Bill Sykes' dog, isn't he? <laughs> no matter how badly he's treated, he keeps coming back for more. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, sir. I don't know how much longer I can keep up this pretense. Really? But, I mean, you're doing splendidly, Piglet. The way you installed that surveillance camera in the wrong house last week was inspired. <laughs> wasn't inspired, sir. I was pissed out of my brain. <laughs> It's the booze, you see. I can't fake it. I have to drink the stuff, and I'm not used to it. I picked a fight with an 18-stone Irish navvy yesterday. <laughs> well, hopefully all this will resolve itself before you get anything broken. Well, I hope so. You see, I'm not like you, sir. I find it very difficult being a bastard. <laughs> I'd ignore that remark, Big Lid. The truth is that if the head of our department is indeed a mole, as you suggest, then this is the only way to flush him out. Yes, well, I never did suggest Major Maxwell was a mole, sir. I simply gave you the tape of his telephone conversation during your last investigation of him. And pretty damning it was, too. I understand you are having a few problems. Yes, it's been a bit hairy. Things are getting a bit difficult here. I can always get you out. I don't know. I need time. Look, I can't say any more. I'll be in touch. <coughs> Conclusive, if you ask me. So how's my doing all this supposed to trap Maxwell? Well, once he sees you on the ragged edge, chances are he'll try and recruit you for the KGB. He'll offer you money. That's nearly always the traitor's first move. But he probably doesn't even know I'm on the ragged edge yet. God help me, I could be doing my Oliver Reed impersonation for the next five years. <laughs> well, then we'll have to engineer a meeting so that he does see you in your present condition. In the meantime, Piglet, what can I say? <laughs> Keep up the bad work. <laughs> Oi! Is this thing rigged or what? Cut it out, you. Cobblers. <laughs> Waste of time. Three times I nudged that. Do you think I could get a bloody banana off? Yeah, calm What's down, the... calm. Sit down. Sit down. What a Pope scratching, Piglet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Shut up, Lewis. It's not funny, it's pathetic. All right, I want another drink. Anybody else? Oh, steady on, Pete. It is only lunchtime. Shh. Another lager in here, mate? Sarah! Ah, you found it. Great. Mm. What can I get you? Um, just a St. Clement's, please. All right. Uh, Speedy, can I have a clean for my wife? Are you all right? Yeah, I'm better than all right. I am fine. <laughs> now, come on, my friend. Well, actually, Peter, there's something I need to talk to you about. Oh, yeah? We've had two cheques bounced by the bank. Oh, well, that is disgraceful, isn't it? Well, they've obviously made a mistake. Well, that's what I thought, but I phoned them and they said we're overdrawn. No, we can't be. <laughs> I've still got four cheques left in my book. So... <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's, it's you then, isn't it? You've been topping up your wardrobe, haven't you? Hitting the top shop trail. It's not me. I pay for my own clothes with my own money. You know that. This was the joint account. Yeah, well, don't worry about it. But it must have gone somewhere. Money doesn't just disappear like that. Where can it have gone to? Paid up park. <laughs> Look, we'll talk about it later. All right? Now, come on, meet my friend. Look, Peter, I'm sorry to go on about this, but we've got to sort it out. Can I look at your cheque? Will you shut up about the bloody money? We'll talk about it later. What? Now come and meet one. Women. <laughs> Watch it! Get stuffed. What? Right. Lads? <laughs> what have we got to do about Pete? I mean, he's a completely changed person. Yeah, it's like Jekyll and Hyde, isn't it? Next thing you know, he'll be shaving the back of his hands. <laughs> Look, it's the gambling that's the big problem. How can we help him with that? Sonic gun. Pardon? A sonic gun. You point at the other horses, drives them barmy. <laughs> no, I didn't mean how can we help him to win. I meant how can we help him to kick the habit. Gamblers Anonymous. Well, that's just stupid, isn't it? I mean, how are we going to find them if they're anonymous? <laughs> We must do. We must get some money into his wife's hands just to tide him over. Yeah. Good idea. Well done, Flint. So, what do you reckon is the best way? We could stage Piglet Aid. <laughs> we hire Wembley Stadium. <laughs> we 
We phone up Phil Collins, Paul McCartney, Elton John. We tell him it is a good cause. Mm, well, <laughs> no, maybe not, maybe not. Well, I suppose I could raffle my body for charity. <laughs> Make it medical research and I'll buy a ticket. <laughs> the winner gets a night of passion with me. I mean, it'd be like a bonkathon. <laughs> of passion. I can't see you raising very much, Lewis. <laughs> no, what we need is a straightforward whip round. <laughs> Good idea. But just this department to begin with. I'll tell you what, I'll put in a fiver, get the ball rolling. Yeah, that's yeah. idea. Here, I've had a good idea. We could ask Drummond to kick in and all. Right. Let's know how you get on. <laughs> Ah, there you are, Piglet. Now, don't go balmy. Company funds, remember? Right. No, I'll be very careful, sir. I'll try and make it last all night. Uh, How much is here? Twelve pounds. <laughs> oh, I bet the casino are in a panic in case I put it all on one number, eh? Now, Maxwell will be here any moment, so listen carefully. All you have to do is to keep up the dissolute drunk act and he'll play straight into our hands. In fact, he's right here now. i better make myself scarce. Listen out for any offers of money. Good luck, Piglet. I'll be at home awaiting your call. <laughs> um, sorry, I, I put some chips down. You lost, sir. No, I wasn't. <laughs> How are you doing? Yeah. yeah. What are you doing here? Uh, what? <laughs> Losing. Do you? Well, I, I, I've only just arrived. Oh. Look, are you all right? You seem a little, um... What? Sloth? Yeah. <laughs> well, can you blame me? I've lost all my money, Andy. I'm in debt up to here. And with the money you guys pay, well... Y yes, well, Piglet, we'll discuss this some other time. Oh. Oh, right. Well, that's bloody typical, isn't it? Some other time. I need some money now. Is there something wrong, then, sir? Yeah, no, no. No, it's fine. Look, Piglet, you're causing a scene. Why don't you go and get some fresh air? Because I don't want any fresh air. I want some money. Oh, come on. Don't you want to give me some money, Andy? No, I do not. And it's not Andy, it's Major Maxwell. Number 17, please. No, uh, no, 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 no. No, don't put it on 17. Put it on, um... 23. No, no, no trust me. <laughs> no more bets, please. No, no, wait, what? Right, 23. Come on, 23. Come on, 23. 17 black. <laughs> Go home, Piglet. That's an order. Place your bets, please, ladies and gentlemen. Look, look, it's no good getting humped here about it, is it? No, just have another go. I won't touch your chips, I promise. No more bets, please, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, well, come on. You could at least give it a decent spin. Look, watch, watch. Uh, and that. And that. <laughs> No, no, don't worry about me, sir. I'll be fine. You surprise me, Chapman. Never put you down as being the type who'd behave in such a manner. Well, it's a sad story, you see, sir. I've lost all my money. Well, don't worry, Piglet. I'm here to help. Well, I thought you might be. Come on, then. How much are we talking about? 
Here's a fiver for your taxi home. <laughs> a fiver? I was thinking more about 10,000. 10,000? How far away do you live then? <laughs> Not for the cab. For me. Yeah. Now, listen, Piglet. I am aware that you've had a few problems lately. Mm. You know, dear. Oh, yes, I do. It's a very small community, Piglet. It's hard to keep secrets. Huh. That's a bit of a worry, isn't it, when you consider we work for MI5? <laughs> 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 yeah. If we can't keep secrets, well, who can? Eh? Now, <laughs> what I'm saying, Piglet, is that boozing and gambling isn't the answer to your problems. And believe me, I'm speaking as one who knows. Oh, yeah. You remember when I was under investigation? Yeah, vaguely. Well, I was very despondent. I even considered getting out of the business altogether. In fact, a chum of mine called and offered to get me out. He wanted me to take a place on the board of his company. But I said no. I was determined to ride the thing out. So that's what your telephone conversation was on about? Exactly. <laughs> what telephone conversation? Well, uh, no, 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 nothing. nothing. Uh, the point is, Piglet, that I think you should ride it out too, and I'll help you all I can. And I don't want you to think of me as just someone who'll fire you if you don't pull your socks up. I want you to look upon me as a friend. Thank you, sir, but I don't think that'll be necessary. You see, all this drinking and gambling has been a pretense. Sorry? To try and trap you into revealing yourself as a KGB mole. What? Yes, I'm afraid Mr. Drummond read rather more into one of your phone conversations than was really there. He instructed me to play this part so that you try and recruit me with vast sums of money. Did he indeed? Well, I hope you know better now. Well, yes. Well, in truth, I never believed you were a mole. I just wish Mr. Drummond had shared my faith. Yes, well, we all know the reason for that, don't we? Sir? Think about it, Piglet. Good night. Of course. Drummond started the witch hunt on Maxwell to deflect attention from himself. Bloody hell, Drummond's the mole. <laughs> Give me that again. I told you, Drummond put 50 quid in the whip round for Pete. I don't believe it. Neither do I. That bloke's got the shortest arms and deepest pockets in the service. Nevertheless, it is true. Look. Oh, well, it should certainly help Peter pay a couple of bills. Yeah. Look out. Shh. You're not going to believe what has happened. Don't tell me you're back to winner. What? No, no, no. I found out something staggering. You wait till I tell you what Drummond's done. Oh, he knows. Oh, great. We were going to surprise you with it. Oh, you know. Of course we do. We started it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, we're all in on it, Pete. Drummond, us four, dozens of others. It's quite something, isn't it? We got your money here, Pete. <laughs> and you think I'd take it? <laughs> well, you disgust me, all of you. Of all the people I thought I could rely on, well, you can take your numbered Swiss bank account and your thousands of pounds because I am not bloody interested. <laughs> thousands of pounds? Did somebody else kick in? <laughs> Look, just calm down, Piglet. Calm down? You must be joking. They're all in on it, you know. And to think we thought you were the traitor. Well, I tell you what, you are the only one that's clean. Believe me, this department is so infested, we might as well have a brass plaque outside saying KGB London Branch. <laughs> These are serious accusations. I think I'd better get Morris Drummond in. Get him in? He's the ringleader. Drummond? No. Yes, sir. Ask Mr. Drummond to step into my office. Certainly, sir. There's no good talking to Truman. He's with them as well. He'll tip Drummond off and you won't see either of them again. I expect Drummond already phoned Aeroflot to book his ticket. <laughs> uh, the next time you'll see him, I'll be on the front page of the Daily Mirror. Wearing a fur hat with the Kremlin in the background. Uh, well, to see me, Andrew. Ah, you slipped up this time, Boris. <laughs> Go on, 
Well, sir, arrest him. Don't, don't be ridiculous. We don't have powers of arrest. Well, shoot him then. <laughs> oh, my God, he snapped. Oh, it's my fault. I do blame myself, Andrew. I obviously put Piglet under too much pressure when we were trying to trap you. Sorry? I, I mean, clear you. Oh, there have been scurrilous accusations flying around. <laughs> well, there are more now, Morris. Piglet thinks that you're in the pay of the Russians. What? Oh, that's ridiculous. And Truman as well. And Lewis. Lewis. Mm -hmm. And Flint. And Dexter. Dexter? Are you mad, Piglet? I know he behaves like he's being paid by the Russians, but ask yourself, is it likely? <laughs> All right, then. So why did Dexter and the others offer me money, then, eh? Explain that away. <laughs> well, so convincing was your performance, Piglet, that your chums decided to have a whip round for you. In fact, to add to the illusion, I myself contributed 50 pounds. I see. Now, ask yourself, Piglet, would the man who set the trap to catch the Soviet recruiting officer be the recruiting officer himself? But you yourself said the reasons why he was hounding you were obvious. And so they are. Morris has been after my job for years. Yes, exactly. <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> My dear fellow, how could you think such a thing? <laughs> well, I suppose maybe I've jumped to a few too many conclusions. Indeed you have, Piglet. I'm very sorry, sir. I think you owe your colleagues an apology as well. Yes, sir. And Piglet, when you do see your chums, would you mind telling them that I would rather like my 50 pounds back? <laughs> so the horses, the drinking and all that was just a put up job to draw out Maxwell? Exactly. And like an idiot, I then thought that Drummond was the mole. Do you know, I even told Maxwell that you lot were traitors. <laughs> well, I suppose it's good to have you back to normal again. You're here. And even the money problems were set up. Yep. <sighs> Unbelievable. Ah. Sarah, hi. Let me introduce you. This is Dexter, Truman, Flint and Lewis. This is my wife, Sarah. Hello. Hello. You didn't get to meet these the last time you were here. No, you were too busy being a pain in the arse. Yes. Well, sorry about that. I have explained to Sarah about the pressures of work. Oh, yes. She's very demanding. So you all work with Peter at the Ministry? Ministry? Oh, at the Ministry. Yeah, yes, indeed. Yes, we all work at the Ministry. Do we? <laughs> of we do. Oh, yes. Yes, it's quite a vocation being a vicar, you know. <laughs> Just ignore Dexter. He's got this funny sense of humour. Oh, before I forget, Peter, we've had a letter from the bank apologising for our disappearing funds. Apparently our account's back to normal now. Strange, isn't it? Yes, yes, isn't it? Oh, speaking of money, guys, Drummond wants his 50 quid back. Ah. Uh, mm. What? <laughs> well, that might be a problem. You see, when you said you didn't want the money, we went and had a curry on it. It was very nice, too. You should have been there. We did, however, drink your elf. Hmm. Thank you. I'm touched. Can I get anybody a drink? Oh, no, 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 it's all right. I'll get these. Oh, steady on, Pete. You've bought the last three rounds. Don't want you in financial trouble again, do we? Oh, don't worry. I'm all right for cash at the moment. Oh, Where'd you get that from? There must be a fortune there. Well, it was the horses. Oh, believe me, guys, I tried to lose, but what can you do, eh? 